What's up investors, Sneer is here. Today we are talking about REITs payout ratio. REITs must pay at least 90% of their income as dividends by law. Yet many REITs have a payout ratio of far below 90%. In this video I will cover what is a payout ratio, how it's possible that REITs pay less than 90%, why as investors in REITs we might prefer them to pay less than 90%, the trade-offs of managing the payout ratio smartly and how it can be used as a growth engine. And for the last part of the video we will take a look at two different REITs with two different strategies. One targets are relatively low, at least in the REITs world, the payout ratio of 75%, while the other targets more than 100%, paying more than its income every quarter. First, let's quickly cover what is a payout ratio. The payout ratio tells us the ratio of dividends paid to the investors from the net income of the company, and it's calculated as such. Payout ratio equals the dividend paid to investors divided by the earnings of the company. So for example, if a company had earnings of $10 and it pays $5 as dividends, they have 50% payout ratio. Similarly, if a company had $10 in earnings and it pays out $11 as dividends, it means that they have a payout ratio of 110%. So everything above 100% in a payout ratio means that the company pays more than it's earned. REITs, by their definition, have much higher payout ratio than dividend companies. By the law definition, REITs must pay 90% of their taxable income as dividends for the investors. Yet the payout ratio for many REITs is far lower than 90%. NARIT publishes a monthly report on REITs, and in this monthly report they show the historical averages of the payout ratios of REITs which you can see right now. As you can see, most of the time it revolves around 70%. The reason it's possible is accounting technicality. The law says that REITs must pay 90% of their taxable income. And the definition of taxable is what's important here. Not all of the revenues of the REIT are taxable income and the REIT can use very valid accounting techniques to avoid having taxes on most of their income by deferring it for later and then by definition not having to pay the dividends immediately on it. Using depreciation accounting, writing off some of the income as reinvestments and many other techniques allow them to do that. Admittedly, the accounting magic is interesting but not as important to understand REITs. The important point here is that REITs can play with the numbers a bit and save more money to reinvest in the company. Having this gap that some REITs can save a bit more money for reinvestment creates important strategic decisions that you need to be aware of when you research a REIT. The main consideration is what's better, paying everything to the investors or saving some for reinvestment in the REIT and what it depends on. Guys, if this video is valuable to you and you want to support me, a hit to the like button will help me a lot. I also want to mention I have multiple videos on the subject of REITs and a playlist and you can see it in the description below or the card above me. In another video I made, I talked all about how REITs grow and if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the details, you can see the link in the description. But in general, there are two paths for REITs to grow, the internal growth and the external growth. Internal growth focuses on growing the revenues from assets already existing within the REIT, for example, by raising rents on existing assets or refurbishing some assets to get the rents up. External growth focuses on growing the REIT's revenue by getting new assets to the REIT, for example, by purchasing new assets or purchasing land and developing completely new assets on them or things like that. There is an obvious difference in how capital intensive each path is. Internal growth is much cheaper. For example, raising rents year after year is actually costing nothing and refurbishment is much cheaper than buying completely new asset or even developing completely new asset, which is a project that can take years and is very, very expensive. Funds are needed regardless. And if you want to grow the REIT, you need funds and this fund needs to get from somewhere. There are three main paths for funds for a REIT. The first is the funds it already receives and reinvest, which is what we talk about here, the payout ratio. If the payout ratio is low enough, more of the funds remain in the REIT for reinvestment. The second path is issuing debt. 
getting debt in the market for a certain interest rate and with that debt funding the operations and the growth. And the third way is issuing new shares to the shareholder. Issuing new shares get more funds into the company without any interest payment or anything like that but at the price of diluting existing shareholders. Deciding which funding path is best for every REIT depends on the cost of each path. For example, when a REIT issues debt, it has to pay interest. And if the REIT already have very high debt, maybe the next debt it will try to raise will have such high interest rate that it won't make sense to raise more debt. Or if the REIT wants to issue more shares, let's say that for example currently the REIT is out of favor and the share price is too low in the opinion of the management. So issuing more shares will dilute the existing shareholders for a low funding source so it doesn't make sense to do that. And reinvesting the funds from within the REIT have the price of not getting it as a dividend to the shareholders so there is a price even though it might look as free money. Balancing the funding sources is a very important part in the management of every REIT and understanding it while you're reading the reports of every REIT will allow you to invest smartly. Now let's look at two REITs that have a very different approach to the payout ratio specifically as an example to understand how different REITs manage that. First we will start with Vici Properties. Vici Properties define themselves as an experiential REIT. They focus mostly on the experience of the visitors in their assets. So they hold mostly hotels, gaming venues, and naturally most of their assets are located in Vegas. And Vici have a very defined payout ratio goal. Their goal is 70% for the long term consistently. That means that even if for the short term it goes up or down, they strive to balance it back to the 75% goal they have. They also address it in almost every earning calls they have. Here is an example quote for the earning calls of Q4 of 2020. Our AFFO payout ratio for the fourth quarter was approximately 72%, in line with our long range target of 75%. But keeping some of their earnings in for reinvestment is not the only funding source they have. In their relatively short existence, they consistently get funds from issuing debt and issuing more shares to the shareholders, as you can see in the screen right now. Almost like clockwork, they issue new long-term debt and issue new shares to get more funding sources. And they did that without harming their measures in the long term. As you can see at the screen right now, they had the debt ratio relatively flat throughout the time and their FFO per share, and that's important that we measure it per share as they issue more shares every time, their FFO per share grew tremendously through these times. They used the funds to grow much faster than they could without the funds. So raising these funds is really, really good decision, at least for them, and it's really well managed. The second example I want to show you is of Simon's Property Group. Simon's Property Group is one of the largest REITs in the world and it's mostly focused on the retail side of business. So they focus on malls, shopping centers and things like that. Their strategy around payout ratio is a bit different. They consistently pay more than they earn as dividends to the investors, resulting in a payout ratio of more than 100% almost every time. And they are able to do it because they are so big and their reputation is so good that they can raise debt in a really comfortable terms and that's what they actually did for a long time. As you can see now on the screen, their shares grew only 10% in the last 10 years while their debt grew by almost 50%. In the reports, we even get a peek into the calculations behind it and why it's a good decision for them. For that, they show us the consistent work toward better terms in the long-term debt that they issue. Look at this segment from their financial report of 2019. They announce here better interest rate for their debt going from 4.4% all the way down to 3.3%. And they even show us where the investment is going and how it makes sense to raise debt in these terms, as they show us in the developing section that their redevelopment project yielded 8%. With a yield of 8% in that investment, 
it makes paying for the funds to allow this kind of development 3.3% absolutely no brainer. So their strategy for growth focusing on getting more debt and paying as much as they can back to the investors, which is completely different from the strategy we saw in Vichy. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope it was valuable to you. If you want to see more content from me for the individual investor, consider subscribing. And if you want to see more content about REITs, don't forget to check out the playlist in the description below. And I hope to see you here next time. Bye bye.